Hey guys, it's Mr. Gron. This lesson is 5.5 double and half angle identities. Uh, this is going to be some new formulas uh, that you're going to use to solve some particular type of trig problems uh, that are somewhat complicated, uh, multi-step problems, uh, tying a couple of different things together, kind of like what we've been doing in chapter 5, uh, as well as some simplifying that's fairly complex using square roots and fractions and fractions inside of square roots. So the kind of stuff that it, it's good to have this complicated of an equation is a way to prepare for calculus where things get a little bit tougher. Okay, so we're going to be using uh, double angle and half angle identities to evaluate trig expressions as well as solve trig equations. So here are our new formulas. Uh, so take a moment, pause the video, jot these down and have them next to you while you're watching the video. Uh, and trying the examples and doing the homework problems. Also, we're gonna need our unit circle for this, so have that out as well. If you're having trouble seeing this on the video, take a look on Canvas on the note key, you'll be able to see it uh, more easily. Okay, so, first problem. Sine of theta is 3 fourths on this interval. We wanna find the sine of two times theta, two cosine of two times theta and tangent of two times theta. So. Uh, here's what this looks like. Uh, on, the, on a coordinate plane, right, the interval 0 to pi over 2 from our unit circle would be this interval, right? So it's in the first quadrant. That means that both sine and cosine are positive. That's important for this. Uh, sine is opposite and adjacent, so, I mean opposite and hypotenuse. So I know that this is 3 and this is 4. Now I can use uh, Pythagorean theorem to figure out what my missing side is. We'll call it a for now. So that is a squared plus three squared equals the hypotenuse four squared. And then we'll simplify that to solve for a. Subtract nine from both sides. We get a squared is seven. And then when we square root both sides, we get that a is the square root of seven. And I know it's the positive square root of seven because I know that uh, the adjacent side has to be positive because the sine angle was, or the sine ratio was in the first quadrant according to the information that was given to me. All right, so this is root seven. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna need some more room here, so get rid of that. Okay. Some important information for this is to know what sine is and what cosine is, which would be root 7 over 4. And tangent could be important. It actually turns out that we're not going to need to use the tangent ratio to figure this out. Um, but if you want, it's not a bad idea just to have all this information handy. So that would be opposite over adjacent over root 7. You could rationalize it. I'm going to leave it like that and only rationalize it if I really feel like I need to. Okay, so now what we're doing, we're finding sine of 2 theta cosine and tangent. So if this is theta, if we doubled theta, then our line would be somewhere over here and we're figure, figuring out the trig ratios instead of for this angle, the angle if went all the way to this dotted line using those formulas. Okay, so speaking of the formulas, let's uh, start out with sine of 2 theta. And we'll back up and take a look. Sine of 2 theta is 2 times sine times cosine. And so now that I've figured out what sine and cosine are, I can just do 2. I'm going to make it 2 over 1 because I'm multiplying a bunch of fractions together. So I think it looks nicer if it's 2 over 1. Uh, sine of theta was 3 over 4, cosine was root 7 over 4, and I just have to multiply all those together. Now remember when you're multiplying fractions, right? You're multiplying the numerators and you're multiplying the denominators separately. So on the top, 2 times 3 times root 7 is 6 root 7, and then 1 times 4 times 4 is 16. This fraction is reducible, right? 6 and 16 are both even, they're reduced by 2. So 3 root 7 over 8. All right, next one, cosine of 2 theta. So if I back up again, cosine has a few different options. Um, for this problem, 
I like to use the top one because I'm squaring both of the ratios. I'm going to square 3 fourths and seven, uh, root 7 over 4. And so the denominators are going to be the same, and that's going to make it easier to, for me to combine my fractions in the end and make it one fraction. Uh, with these two versions, there's a 1, um, and I'm going to have to convert that to like a common denominator before I can redo them or before I can combine them. All right. So cosine 2 theta, it was cosine squared minus sine squared. And so cosine squared, that is going to be root 7 over 4 squared minus sine squared, which will be 3 over 4 squared. And so now I just have to square these and then combine the fractions to simplify. Uh, so when I square this one, the square root, Squaring the square root of 7 cancels the square root, so it's just 7. Don't forget the square of the denominator, too, so 7 over 16. And then 3 squared over 4 squared is 9 over, four, uh, 9 over 16. And now because I used that top one, it's, you know, they both have a denominator of 16, so it's easy to combine these. 7 minus 9 is negative 2 over 16. Again, I've got a reducible fraction. Right, 2 over 16 would reduce to negative 1 over 8. All right, now, tangent. We could use the tangent formula um, down here, the 2 tangent over 1 minus tangent squared. However, it turns out it's a little easier if we just know what we are, use what we already know about tangent, right? If tangent of theta is equal to sine theta over cosine theta, it turns out that tangent of 2 theta is also sine of 2 theta over cosine of 2 theta. So let's use that instead. And if you want to add that to your notes, um, not a bad formula to have as well. OK, so that means that tangent of 2 theta is going to be sine which is 3 root 7 over 8 all over cosine, which is negative 1 over 8. I can do keep change flip, and this is going to be 3 root 7 over 8 times 8 over negative 1. We can cross cancel the 8s, and now it's 3 root 7 divided by negative 1, so that's going to make it negative 3 root 7 like that. All right, example two. Now we're doing some solving. Now this is similar to the solving that we've been doing in 5.3, um, but we're going to have to do some converting first, which I guess is also similar to what we did in 5.3, uh, but we're now we're going to be converting using the double angle formulas. All right, so now a really big misconception that students have with this. Um, sometimes we like to replace cosine of theta with x to show how you would factor just as if it were x, so, uh, the similarities there, the algebraic similarities. And so sometimes students want to treat this as 2x minus x equals 2, but that is incorrect. This is not the same. It's not 2 times cosine of theta. It's cosine of 2 times theta, which is different. So what I need to do is replace this with something that is going to, to make all of the terms be cosine of theta. So there's not a 2 in the middle. It can be cosine squared theta, because that is really the same as cosine of theta squared. Um, but it can't be cosine of 2 times theta. All right, so if I go back to my formulas. I've got these different cosine uh, formulas here. If I wanted to convert everything in terms of sine, I would use the bottom one. But now I want to convert to cosine. So I'm going to use this middle one, 2 cosine squared minus 1. And that's going to make it so everything is in terms of regular cosine. OK, so this I'm going to replace with 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. right? So all of that went, became this minus cosine theta equals 2. All right, this is a quadratic, right? 
for quadratics, I want to set one side equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract that two from both sides, and I'm going to rewrite this so that it's in standard form, so the cosine squared comes first. So this is going to be two cosine squared theta, then my cosine, and then negative one minus two makes a minus three, equals zero. Okay, now I can treat this as if it were I can replace cosine with x if that helps. So 2x squared minus x minus 3 equals 0. This is a factorable quadratic, and that's how I'm going to start this problem. All right. Now, whether you use the voodoo method or whatever you use to, um, to factor, right, do that. So I know that this is going to have to, these two are going to have to equal uh, 2x when I multiply them. So one is going to have to be 2x, the other is going to have to be x. They're going to multiply to make 2x squared. The other two have to multiply to make this minus 3, and this is going to work if I make this a minus 3 and this a plus 1. Now, a little guess and check sometimes. I can check my work here and see if this foils back out to that, because that's what we're really doing is unfoiling. So distribute there, that's 2x squared. So there is plus 2x, to here is minus 3x, and to here is minus 3. Uh, the 2x minus 3x would become the minus x, so that works. I factored it correctly. Okay, so this means that the cosine version is going to factor 2. 2 cosine theta minus 3, and cosine theta plus 1 equals 0. Well, now I've got it in its factored form. I can just solve for each factor using the zero product property. Uh, that means that this works if 2 cosine theta minus 3 equals 0, and it also works if cosine theta plus 1 equals 0. So now let's solve those separately. A little basic algebra on this side. Divide by 2, and we get cosine of theta equals 3 over 2. All right, so really I want to know uh, what angle has a cosine value of 3 over 2. Well, if I look at my unit circle, over here cosine is 1, right? 3 over 2 would be somewhere outside the unit circle, so there's no angles where the cosine ratio is equal to 3 over 2. So for this factor, uh, there's no solutions, or it's undefined, or however you want to write it. Um, that doesn't mean that there's no solutions for this equation. It just means that this factor didn't produce any solutions. OK, so let's try this one. Same thing, a little basic algebra to start with. and. Where is cosine equal to negative 1 in the unit circle? Well, that's over here where the x value is negative 1, which is at pi. So um, theta equals pi, and that's our only solution for this one. Now, you don't have to write the undefined part as part of your solution. Just write your real solutions that you came up with. Okay. So now the half angle formulas. Uh, find the exact value of sine of 22.5. Now there's a hint here that you're having to use the half angle formulas, the double angle formulas, um, because we're asking you to find the exact value of a trig ratio of an angle which is not on the unit circle. So let's, let's see if we can figure this out. Um, I know that if I do 22.5 times 2, that that is equal to 45, and 45 is on the unit circle. So I want to use 45 as my theta and use the half angle formula. So the half angle formula is this one. Uh, that is sine of theta over 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine theta all over 2. Okay. 
So now instead of doing sine of 22.5, I'm going to do the equivalent of 22.5, which is 45 over 2. 45 divided by 2 is 22.5. So these two things are the same. They just you know, look different for convenience sake because that tells me that I have, um, that I can use whatever theta is right here, right here, and simplify and get the, the correct answer. OK. So first off, it's positive or negative. Now that doesn't mean that it's both positive and negative. That means it could be either positive or negative, but it's one or the other in this case. So we've got to do a little bit of thinking at first. Where on the unit circle would 22.5 be? Well, 45 is right here. 22.5 would be right about there. And that is in the first quadrant, so that means that both sine and cosine are positive. Uh, so I know that this is going to be the positive square root of whatever it ends up being in the end. All right, uh, so then my formula. 1 minus cosine of 45 all over 2. And now I can start to simplify this. Go into my unit circle. What is cosine of 45? 45, 45 has both angles are root 2 over 2. Both sine and cosine are root 2 over 2. And so this is 1 minus root 2 over 2, all over 2. Okay. Now we're not done yet. There's a lot of simplifying that can be done here. Um, one thing in math, we really don't like it when we have fractions inside of fractions. If we, can, if we can reduce this and get out as many fractions as possible, uh, that's going to be the most simplified uh, version of this answer. That's the goal here. So how do I start breaking this down and reducing it? Uh, I want to get this difference on top to be one thing, not a 1 minus something over two, but I want to see if I can get rid of this, um, if I can get rid of this fraction. So I can start that, convert that one to a common denominator. So two over two, right? Because two over two reduces to one, so this hasn't changed the value of anything, it just made it so I can combine the fractions. And I'm gonna make this two over one just because I know I'm gonna have to do keep change flip in the end, and I think it looks better that way, and it reminds me that I'm gonna do keep change flip. Okay, so now I can combine the fractions. You know this is good because I'm using up a, quite a bit of board space. So two minus root two all over two, so I made it one fraction all over two over one. Now we can do keep change flip because it's one fraction over one fraction, one denominator over a fraction with one denominator. So the big square root of two minus root two all over two. Keep change flip, that's gonna be multiplying by one over two. The numerator, I'm just multiplying by one so that one doesn't change, it's two minus root two. And then the denominator, two times two, is 4. Now we're not quite done here. Fully simplified, I've got a perfect square in the denominator, right? So this ends up being the square root of 2 minus the root 2 all over the square root of 4, which is 2. And that is my final simplest answer with this. So it's quite a bit of uh, it's quite a bit of like working with fractions, keep change flip, and just keeping things organized and taking logical steps, not making up fake math, uh, but doing real math. All right, last one. Exact value of tangent of 7 pi over 12. So again, uh, this is one that isn't quite on the unit circle. It looks very similar to ones on the unit circle. Um, but it isn't on the unit circle. So if I multiply this by 2, I'm going to get 14 pi over 12, which reduces to 7 pi over 6, which is on the unit circle. Right? It's right about there. 
OK, so theta is going to be 7 pi over 6 for this one. Now, if I look back at my tangent formulas, um, I have a few different options again here for tangent for my half angle formulas. Um, I prefer this middle one where it's the simplest denominator. Now, truly, it doesn't matter. You could do either of the other two, and if you do it correctly, you'll get the same answer. But I think it's easiest to use that one, personally. All right, so that is, let me write it here so I don't forget it. Tangent theta over 2 is 1 minus cosine theta over sine theta. And go back to our problem here. So I am doing, oops, there we go. So I am doing tangent, not of 7 pi over 12, but of its equivalent, 7 pi over 6, all over 2. And again, 7 pi over 6 divided by 2 is 7 pi over 12, so that's why I can use this formula instead. All right, so this is going to be 1 minus cosine of 7 pi over 6 all over sine of 7 pi over 6. So let's go to our unit circle and see what those trig ratios are. Uh, the x value here is negative root 3 over 2, and the y value is negative 1 half. So I can substitute those in. 1 minus uh, negative root 3 over 2 all over negative 1 over 2. So on the top, it's 1 minus that. So I'm going to change it to plus, right? So it's 1 plus root 3 over 2 all over negative 1 half. Now, it's similar to the previous one, except I don't have to take the, the big square root of everything. But I still want to con uh, I still want to simplify this numerator, right? 1 over one, 1 is the same as 2 over 2, plus root 3 over 2, all over negative 1 half. Now I can combine the fractions on the top into one fraction, so it's going to be 2 plus root 3 all over 2 over negative 1 half. And now that I've got a single denominator uh, for each of them, I can do keep change flip, which is going to be 2 plus root 3 over 2 times 2 over negative 1. The 2's cross cancel, and I end up with 2 plus root 3 all over negative 1. And when I divide by that negative 1, all it does is change the signs there. So negative 2 minus root 3. And there you have it. Uh, if you have any questions, just uh, let your teachers know, and uh, good luck.